Welcome to EPG Patshala. The course Legal Literacy and I am Maruk Aidenwala. Now we are looking at module 3. It deals with the constitution and more specifically looks at Article 21, Right to Life. Article 21, Right to Life is an extremely important fundamental right. Let us read Article 21 and understand it. Protection of life and personal liberty. No person shall be deprived of his life or personal liberty except according to procedure established by law. What do we mean by that? By that we mean that if any person's life is to be extinguished or if any person's personal liberty is to be taken away, it can only be done so by legislation. And that legislation should have a very detailed procedure which requires to be followed before a life is extinguished or before liberty is taken away. What are the main characteristics of Article 21? 1. It does not merely apply to citizens, it applies to everyone. At this point, I would like to say that Article 19, which we examined in the last module, only applies to citizens. Certain fundamental rights apply to everyone and certain only to citizens. Article 21 applies to everyone who is there within the territory of India. The second characteristic is that a person's life or personal liberty can only be deprived if there is a law allowing such deprivation. Third, such law should contain a procedure which is required to be followed prior to such deprivation. The Supreme Court has said that the procedure so laid down should be just, fair and reasonable. Furthermore, the procedure should be strictly followed. Ex extinguishing of life and deprivation of personal liberty can only take place under a judicial order. It cannot be done by executive action. Maneka Gandhi versus Union of India is a case where the Supreme Court lays down that the procedure to be followed prior to depriving a person of personal liberty should be right and just and fair and not arbitrary. At this stage, I would just like to inform you, you must be wondering, what is this 1978-1 SCC 248? Judgments of the High Court and Supreme Court are covered under different reporters. 1978 shows the year in which this judgment was passed. Volume 1 is the volume of the reporter. SCC stands for Supreme Court Cases and 248 is the page number. So on page number 248 of Supreme Court Cases Volume 1 for the year 1978 is contained the Maneka Gandhi versus Union of India Judgment. In some slides, you will see the reporter is described as AIR. That stands for All India Reporter. Now let's go back to reading Maneka Gandhi's case. The procedure contemplated by Article 21 must answer the test of reasonableness in order to be in conformity with Article 14. It must be right and just and fair and not arbitrary, fanciful, or oppressive. Otherwise, it would be no procedure at all, and the requirement of Article 21 would not be satisfied. 
This judgment insists that to meet the test of Article 21, a procedure should be laid down. It is not merely laying down the procedure that is important. The procedure which is laid down should be right, just and fair and not arbitrary and oppressive. Article 21 has been expanded by the Supreme Court to include every facet of life which enables a person to lead a life with dignity. The Supreme Court has repeatedly said that right to life for a human being is more than merely staying alive. It includes many other things, especially the bare necessities of life. Without these bare necessities of life, a life is meaningless. So, the state should provide a human being with all facilities and opportunities which enable a human being to lead an adequate life. The Francis Corley Moulin judgment is a very important judgment of the Supreme Court in this respect. In 1981, it expanded and broadened the meaning of right to life. Hence, today, Article 21 is used by lawyers to ensure people are enabled to lead a life with dignity. Please read this judgment very carefully. So, what does this judgment say? It includes in right to life the main necessaries of life, such as adequate nutrition, clothing and shelter. It doesn't stop at that. It continues to say, and facilities for reading, writing and expressing oneself in diverse forms freely moving about and mixing and co-mingling with fellow human beings is an important facet of right to life. Hence, everything that enables a person to lead a life with human dignity would fall under Article 21 of the Constitution. So the Supreme Court has expanded this term very positively. The following few judgments deals with the different facets of right to life. This slide deals with right to livelihood. In Olga Telles's case, right to livelihood was included within the ambit of Article 21. Olga Telles's case dealt with pavement dwellers who were evicted without being given an opportunity to be heard. One of the grounds on which the petitioner challenged the eviction was that it adversely impacted the people's right to livelihood. This is what the court had to say regarding livelihood. The sweep of the right to life conferred by Article 21 is wide and far-reaching. It does not mean merely that life cannot be extinguished or taken away, as for example by the imposition and execution of the death sentence, except according to procedure established by law. That is but one aspect of the right to life. An equally important facet of the right is the right to livelihood, because no person can live without the means of living, that is the means of livelihood. If the right to livelihood is not treated as a part of the constitutional right to live, the easiest way of depriving a person of his right to life would be to deprive him of his means of livelihood to the point of abrogation. Such a deprivation would not only denude the life of its effective content and meaningfulness, but it would make life impossible to live. Right to shelter also falls within the ambit of Article 21. Shanti Star Builders was a very important case which acknowledged that right to shelter is covered under right to life. Basic needs of men have traditionally been accepted to be three, 
food, clothing and shelter. The right to life is guaranteed in any civilized society that would take within its sweep the right to food, the right to clothing, the right to decent environment and a reasonable accommodation to live in. The difference between the need of an animal and human being for shelter has to be kept in mind. For the animal, it is the bare protection of the body for a human being it has to be a suitable accommodation which would allow him to grow in every aspect physical mental and intellectual the constitution aims at ensuring fuller development of every child that would be possible only if the child is in a proper home it is not necessary that every citizen must be ensured of living in a well-built comfortable house but a reasonable home particularly for people in india can even be mud built thatched house or a mud built fireproof accommodate as right to shelter is a fundamental right one could ask a question. Under what authority do the state agency demolish and forcibly evict those residing in unorganized settlements or what is called slums? It is the obligation of the state to ensure every person is provided with suitable accommodation. Public housing in our country is very scant. Hence, one could argue that if a state does not provide affordable housing to the people, what right does it have to evict them from their shanties? Right to decent environment is another fundamental right falling within Article 21. The Supreme Court has repeatedly said that the right to decent environment should be enjoyed by all in our country. But we are only looking at one judgment. The other judgments are contained in the text which is also uploaded. The judgment we are looking at is Chamanlal Sahu versus Union of India. It is a 1990 judgment in which it says, in the context of our national dimensions of human rights, right to life, liberty, pollution-free air and water is guaranteed by the Constitution under Article 21, 48A and 51G. It is the duty of the state to take effective steps to protect the guaranteed constitutional rights. At this stage, I would like to say, right to a decent environment is not only a fundamental right, it is also included under the chapter of directive principles and fundamental duties. So, the right to breathe pure air, the right to drink portable water, all falls under Article 21. Right to food. In our country, there were several schemes which assured people of food, but these schemes were not being implemented. The Supreme Court was very upset by the apathy of the state in providing food with, for the people. Several parts of our country, people suffer from malnutrition. There were also starvation deaths around the time when the court passed these orders. We are only going to look at a portion of the order which the court passed in the PUCL case. PUCL stands for People's Union for Civil Liberties. The anxiety of the court is to see that poor and the destitute and the weaker sections of the society do not suffer from hunger and starvation. It is the prime responsibility, it goes on to say that it is the prime responsibility of the state to ensure people get adequate food. Please see para 7. Article 21 of the Constitution of India protects for every citizen a right to live with human dignity. Would the very existence of life of those families which are below poverty line not come under danger for want of appropriate schemes and implementations thereof to provide requisite aid to such families? Hence, 
This judgment dealt with streamlining the functioning of the public distribution system to ensure that people at the grassroots got the food and the nutrition they required. Right to health also falls within the ambit of Article 21. There have been several judgments regarding this aspect. But we are looking at Paschim Banga Bhet Mazdur Samiti versus State of West Bengal. In a welfare state, the primary duty of the government is to secure the welfare of the people. Providing medical facilities for the people is an essential part of the obligations undertaken by the government in a welfare state. The government discharges this obligation by running hospitals and health centers which provide medical care to the person seeking to avail of these facilities. Article 21 imposes an obligation on the state to safeguard the right to life of every person. Preservation of human life is thus of paramount importance. This judgment very clearly says that it is a primary duty of the state to provide health facilities to the people. Every person is entitled to medical care. Hence, the state is required at the rural level to set up primary health centers and at the tertiary level to set up hospitals and municipal dispensaries to ensure everybody in the country has access to medical care. Supreme Court has also passed judgments regarding giving prompt medical treatment to an accident victim without asking for legal procedures to be first fulfilled because the essence of right to health is preserving human life. The right to know. Of course, now we have a law, the Right to Information Act, which ensures that the functioning of the state is transparent and public authorities are accountable. But this law came in 2005. Prior to that, too, right to know was included as a fundamental right under Article 21. In SR Oil Limited, the Supreme Court said, Besides, the citizens who have been made responsible to protect the environment have a right to know. There is also a strong link between Article 21 and the right to know, particularly where secret government decisions may affect health, life and livelihood. The role of voluntary organizations as protective watchdogs to see that there is no unrestrained and unregulated development cannot be emphasized. This judgment is very important in as much as it recognizes that public authorities are not transparent in their functioning. Hence, it is very difficult for people to know what is actually happening behind closed doors and in the corridors of power. Hence, this judgment gave people a tool to find out what is happening. The right to human conditions and treatment in childcare institution. As we've earlier said, to lead a life with human dignity falls under Article 21. The Supreme Court has often been called upon to look at the pathetic situations in institutions, housing, women, children, or the mentally disabled. This is one such judgment. Vikram Dev Singh Tomar, please read it carefully. It states that the right to live with human dignity is the fundamental right of every Indian citizen. And so in the discharge of his responsibilities to the people, the state recognizes the need for maintaining establishments for the care of those unfortunates, both women and children, who are the castaways of an imperfect social order. So in a welfare state, it is the responsibility of the state to take care of those who are unable to care for themselves. The Supreme Court judgment goes on to say that these homes are euphemistically described as care homes. 
and that they should at least provide minimum conditions to ensure human dignity. Now we are going to look at the judgments which relate to personal liberty. The right to travel abroad and the issuance of a passport was addressed by the Supreme Court in Satwan Singh Sauni's case. The Supreme Court held that the right to travel abroad under Article 21 of the Constitution, no person can be deprived of his right to travel except according to procedure established by law. Whether the right to travel is part of personal liberty or not, within the meaning of Article 21 of the Constitution, such an arbitrary prevention of a person from tra traveling abroad will certainly affect him prejudicially. So, traveling abroad and issuing a passport falls under Article 21 of the Constitution. If you want to deprive a person of travel, there should be a law which lays down a procedure and the circumstances in which such person may be denied such right. Right to speedy trial. Right to speedy trial forms part of the right to a fair trial and falls under Article 21 of the Constitution. Please read this slide carefully. In our country, under trials remain in custody for long periods of time and their liberty is curtailed. Hence, right to speedy trial forms an important part of Article 21. Fair, just and reasonable procedure implicit in Article 21 of the Constitution creates a right in the accused to be tried speedily. Right to speedy trial is the right of the accused. Please see para two, point two. Right to speedy trial flowing from Article 21 encompasses all the stages, namely the stage of investigation, inquiry, trial, appeal, revision and retrial. This is how this court has understood this right and there is no reason to take a restrictive view. Hence, it is not only speedy trial, the police too have to conduct a speedy investigation so that the criminal case is completed as soon as possible. Right to a fair trial. Every accused is entitled to a right to a fair trial, which also falls under the guarantee of Article 21 of the Constitution. Right to a fair trial also includes the right to a legal representation. Right against fettering. Fettering and handcuffing is also barbaric and affects a person's right to human dignity. And Article 21 prohibits fettering. Next. Right against solitary confinement. Please read this slide closely. In Sunil Batra's case, the Supreme Court said, if by imposing solitary confinement there is total deprivation of camaraderie amongst co-prisoners, co-mingling and talking and being talked to, it would offend Article 21. Next. Right to free legal aid. In Hussein Ara Khatun's case, the Supreme Court said that the right to free legal aid is a very important part of Article 21 and is an important part to right to a fair hearing. We have seen Francis Coralie Mullin's case earlier, but here it deals with a prisoner. It says that a prisoner should also be allowed to meet his family, his friends, and be able to co-mingle with his fellow prisoners. If for any reason his his mingling needs to be restricted. There should be a law which regulates such restriction. So, in this module, we examine Article 21 and more importantly, the broadening of 
Article 21 by the Supreme Court. We saw the different judgments by which right to life has been broadened to include right to livelihood, right to shelter, right to food, etc. We also judge, saw judgments which related to the broadening of personal liberty. We saw that fettering of a prisoner is barbaric and against his human dignity. We also saw judgments with regards to right of an accused to legal aid and the rights of an accused to fair trial. If you want to read more about fundamental rights, an important book is The Constitution by Basu.